Hello. So thanks a lot for this great introduction. Uh, I finished my presentation yesterday. Firstly, I would like to say a big thanks to Smuggler sitting there, who is responsible for uh, proofreading, uh, technical proofreading of my of my presentation. Uh, I prepared this presentation especially uh, for this Congress, so it's my first presentation of this presentation uh, presentation here. Uh, I would definitely appreciate if uh, it could be some kind of more collaborative. So if you have any question, just raise your hand, ask. Don't hesitate to do that. Uh, so my, the name of my presentation is How Governments Push for well, the Security of Crypto Markets. So uh, firstly, I realized that security of crypto markets is a very sensitive topic. So uh, it probably is not very uh, cool for white hat security companies to do any research or any security analysis of crypto markets. The second reason is probably they do not have full access to these crypto markets. For example, source code. Uh, they, they can see these crypto markets only from outside, like the most users. Uh, the security of crypto markets is critical, is crucial. So, I mean, um, if, if it fails, it, it can lead to imp imprisonment and, or death of hundreds, or even thousands. Uh, many often innocent people, or massive theft of their, of, of their cryptocurrency, their possession. I found some uh, IT security related papers to crypto markets, but unfortunately they were paid, so I, I couldn't use them. Uh, what I can say after my analysis that some crypto markets may have even better security, like the most popular social network, or for example, Gmail. So uh, let's come back to the first version of Silk Road. Uh, despite the fact that the Silk Road market was one of the most popular crypto market ever, and it was probably the most successful crypto anarchistic project ever, uh, with a revenue one, uh, $1.2 billion, uh, it was not very secure, but it was the first one. So it was a single server with no decentralization. There, were, uh, there was potentially quite vulnerable PHP application. So it was possible to make some PHP attacks. There was no two second, second factor authentication. In that, uh, that uh, time, no one, uh, no, no one knew something like multisig. And of course, in that time also, we had just Bitcoins, not, crypto, not true anonymous cryptocurrency. But despite all of this, it took more than two years for, for FBI to find, to reveal uh, people behind a silver market uh, who, and we, now we can, we, can, we can definitely say this, uh, uh, who underestimated protection of their digital privacy. So, yes, it's true. Unfortunately, sometimes operational security can save your life. We can see it, unfortunately, in the case of Ross Ulbricht, uh, the guy behind uh, uh, Silk Road Market. Exactly one year ago, we had a great uh, presentation at this place uh, from his mother, uh, Lynn Ulbricht. Okay, so... So now I would like to describe all new and all new cool, secure uh, features that are implemented in the current uh, uh, black markets, or crypto markets, that were not um, integrated or they were not part of the, the first Silk Road version one. Uh, if, you, if you are more involved in the IT security industry, you may, you may know something like PCI DSS. It's a standard made by Visa and MasterCard. And thanks to this standard, if you want to process any credit card information, you need uh, to enforce second factor authentication. So if you are, for example, a bank, and you want to process credit card numbers, you definitely need to be PCI DSS compliant and implement second 
uh, factor authentication. Implementing second, but the reason why the most crypto market decided to use uh, second factor authentication is completely different. They really don't care about something like PCI DSS. Fortunately, second factor authentication is implemented in all modern crypto markets. And in some uh, cases, for example, Alphabay, probably Alphabay is a crypto market, most advanced crypto art market with the most features and more, uh, most security features. Uh, in this case, it's mandatory. Uh, like uh, almost always when I did this analysis, uh, second factor authentication is implemented like PGP private key owner verification. So as a second uh, factor authentication, they provide you some uh, encrypted text uh, encrypted by your public PGP key and you need to download this text, uh, decrypt it on your, on your desktop and uh, and write back to the market uh, some decrypted hash or some, some decrypted text. And after that, you, ha you are already uh, verified and you can log into the crypto market. Uh, I was a bit surprised that something like synchronous OTP, maybe you know Google Authenticator, which is pretty common in the case of most Bitcoin services, uh, is still not used. And that there, there are maybe two different reasons. The first one is that uh, crypto markets probably do not believe in smartphone security. And the second reason is probably they just want not to be dependent on some third party, or at least as possible. Uh, uh, anyway, despite of this, if, if you have enabled two-factor authentication, uh, it is possible to set up something like one-time passport just for one time uh, log into the crypto market. Another interesting thing when you compare uh, crypto markets to typical e-shops is that they do not provide something, some feature like uh, sending pa password reset emails because this is considered not to be a good security practice. Uh, many, mar uh, many crypto markets solve this using something like mnemonic phrase, which is displayed you for the first time when you are registering uh, to this crypto market. So. It's the same like a uh, seed of your Bitcoin wallet. You just need to, to read and to note eight English words. And if you know these English words, uh, in the future, you are always able to retrieve your forgotten password. Anti-DDoS protection. So uh, DDoS attacks are critical for these Tor hidden services. Uh, like uh, during evolution, technical evolution of Tor, uh, these distributed uh, denial of service attacks uh, have been changed over time. Uh, now, probably the most efficient attack against uh, distributed denial of service is a very specific uh, flooding attacks to rendezvous points. If you know the Tor arch architecture, you definitely know what is rendezvous points. So, uh, also, this second situation, which is, uh, which is pretty difficult to to do for the normal people, but not so difficult for government, uh, because the government uh, potentially uh, can have access to multiple Tor nodes. They can do uh, some very uh, specific and aggressive uh, denial, uh, denial distribu distributed denial of service attacks from different nodes, and, and consequently perform some statistical measures uh, in order to compromise Tor security. So this, this is possible to do by, by government. Also, uh, many crypto markets, as a protection uh, against uh, distributed denial attacks, they use, uh, something, uh, they use something CAPTCHA. Uh, I did some analysis of this CAPTCHA, and I found out that in all cases, in 100% cases, I was able to crack this CAPTCHA. But it's still big. Can, uh, can be enough protection against stupid attackers. Another interesting uh, point uh, is that some crypto markets, for example, Alphabay, they implement, uh, implemented something like double tour security, what means they're a bit slower, like uh, other crypto markets. They try to encapsulate Tor connection in another Tor connection. Uh, Smuggler told me, I can provide also explanation why this is not definitely good practice, because, uh, uh, because 
these connections uh, can be compromised on the editor exit node. Also, uh, what is quite interesting is that uh, there are public Tor and private Tor gateways for many crypto, uh, crypto markets. In case, public Tor, me, uh, Tor gateway means that uh, it's an official public onion address which is available for everybody. And uh, usually this, this onion address is under regular strong denial service attack. But if you are a trusted crypto market user, it's quite likely you will receive something like a private Tor gateway address, uh, especially generated for you. And thanks to this, you can, uh, you can access to your favorite crypto market. Uh, but of course, there is anonymity risk because your identity is always associated with your specific Tor um, on an address. So from this point of view, if you care about anonymity, it's definitely a better idea to use public uh, Tor gateway. Contracts. This is also something completely new. So uh, Alphabet Dark Web Markets um, introduced something what is called contracts. What basically means that every user in crypto market uh, can make contract about anything with some any, another uh, user. This contract costs you five dollars in bitcoins, and it's paid to the market administrator. And you can you can agree on anything you want basically. So, for example, if you are on vacation uh, uh, or uh, you are too busy, you can you can uh, delegate it to some other people and and uh, decide other people to, to do be, uh, behind you, behind you. Okay, uh, there is another mention from the uh, Alpha, Alpha Bay administrator, Hitman will never be allowed and we don't want to this kind of, uh, of attention. So, so most crypto, the, this is quite important to, uh, to say, uh, most crypto markets uh, behave Quite ethical, I think. So they don't usually they don't allow um, you know, hitmans, they don't allow child pornography, and so on. Another feature uh, which is quite new, and most people who are using uh, Bitcoin they have never uh, often they have never tried something like this is a multisig. Like multisig is uh, supported, for example, by a recent version of Electrum, so you can you can try to do something like that. Basically, it means that uh, you can generate and use so-called multi-signature addresses, uh, which are controlled by more than one people, by two or three people. So, thanks to this, uh, you can decide about uh, transfer, about uh, money transfer, Bitcoin transfer, uh, depending on, on their confirmation. So, for example, uh, you have two of three signature address jointly controlled by three people. Uh, usually, one is buyer, the second one is seller, the third one is side operator. So, if any two people, for example, buyer and uh, seller, or buyer or side operator, decide that the transaction uh, is approved, everything is fine, the money or cryptocurrency is moved to the destination address. Okay, this is some. Um, more detailed description of how multisig exactly works in Alphabay. So you can you can see it later if you want to try it. Tumble your bitcoins or mix your bitcoins, laundry your bitcoins. So uh, there are multiple ways. Uh, so the problem of bitcoin you definitely know is that the bitcoin has uh, public transaction history. So it means that all Bitcoin transaction uh, are public and, and anyone can see this transaction. So for example, uh, at least at this time there are two or three companies in the world uh, which are able, uh, which help uh, secret agencies like for example FBA, NSA, DEA and these, uh, to, to track um, potential criminals and they are expert for Bitcoin blockchain analysis. So if you want to protect against these attacks, I strongly recommend you to use some kind of mixing services or tumbling services. Uh, probably one of two most popular uh, 
which are recommended by uh, by crypto market vendors are Bitblender and Grams Helix. Uh, uh, for example, it is possible to even use uh, mixing services based on BitMessage, which is supported uh, uh, recommendation from Outlaw, Outlaw Crypt Market. But my favorite uh, recommendation, and not only mine, is when you want to mix and you want, when you want to uh, reveal uh, dangerous transaction history, uh, is to, to convert your Bitcoins to Monero which should be the true uh, anonymous cryptocurrency, and then back to Bitcoins. And um, in the ideal situation, you should use two different uh, exchange services. You can use blurtrade.com if you want to uh, exchange Bitcoin to Monero. And if you want to exchange Monero back to Bitcoin, you can use poloniex.com. Anyway, so this is probably the most safe way how uh, to how to humble your bitcoins. Okay, uh, maybe you now there are many different approaches how to uh, implement true anonymous cryptocurrencies or much more anonymous cryptocurrencies compared to bitcoins. There are, uh, f there are m many different approaches, for example, Zcash or Dash, but probably one of the most stable and used by crypto markets in production, in, in, uh, as a production use, is definitely Monero. So two, two biggest crypto markets, like Alphabet and Oasis, they support Monero. And if you, want to, if, you, if you want to do any secure transaction at the crypto markets, I strongly recommend you not to use Bitcoins and switch to Monero. Uh, I, would definitely, I would like to, to describe two important characteristics of of anonymous currency Monero. One is, one is low, low traceability, uh, and the second is uh, some kind of privacy. Uh, as, you can, as you can know, the Monero uses a special system uh, that allows you to send and receive your cryptocurrency uh, without your transaction being publicly visible. This is really important. Uh, so it basically means that any your purchases received and only any tra uh, other transfer uh, remain private. Another cool feature is that uh, it implements something like uh, ring signatures. Uh, it's a quite deep math you sh I recommend you to study. And uh, it means that thanks to, thanks to this feature or advantage, Monero can have really untraceable transaction. So uh, it basically means that these transactions are not impossible, but quite difficult to link to some particular users. OK. So, uh, so this is Monero chart. Uh, like, it's a quite new thing. I mean, Monero is quite old, but, in, uh, but integration of Monero to crypto market is a one-month thing. So uh, during, as, you, as we can see, uh, during 22nd August, they announced, crypto markets uh, now they, want, uh, they wanted to implement Monero, and the implementation was done during this date. And as you can see, now the uh, price of Monero was quite significantly imp uh, increased. So, so maybe it's a good idea to buy Monero at this time, and if, especially because now there is no good Monero wallet, and I'm and I'm more than sure when uh, the first where, where there be first really good usable Monero wallet uh, price will be increased again. Sure access. So this is also quite interesting if you if you have some. Uh, uh, Crypto anarchist company, for example, you need to uh, delegate a lot of rights and a lot of accesses to to your team, and uh, and still you need to to do and to keep your business running. So uh, it's, it's possible using the feature which is called short access, and you can do that without giving your personal password to the crypto market. Crypto market API, 
This is quite interesting feature. It's another security feature because till now I um, was talking about security features. Crypto market API means that it is technically possible, for example, to implement crypto market eShop aggregator. So, for example, you can make some aggregator, uh, make some uh, some some eShop, um, and propagate this eShop to to all crypto markets that. Uh, that have some crypto market API. Of course, if you want to use crypto market AP, uh, um, API, you need to use a second factor authentication and you need to use something like purchase speed, which is, which is default in most crypto markets. What else? Inline PGP encryption and PGP webmail client. So, uh, the cool thing, wait a moment. This is, okay. Okay. The cool thing is that uh, all, all crypto markets, they have your public PGP key. So technically, they're able to encrypt all your communication inside of, inside of the uh, given crypto market, uh, which is also called automatic message encryption. So if you want to use some crypto market, I definitely recommend you to check if it supports something like automatic message encryption. Uh, it basically means that if there is a raid from police or some secret agents uh, and they, they take all your data, all your communication is uh, fortunately encrypted. So, uh, Another cool feature is that I found that some crypto market uh, in, uh, implemented something like PGP webmail client. So it is possible to make uh, PGP encryption inside of your browser. Personally, I do not consider this to be a good security practice because it basically means that you, that you need to provide your private PGP key to your browser, which is definitely not a good idea. But it's, uh, from, my, from usability point of view, it can be fine because most people uh, don't know how to use PGP and how to copy information from uh, terminal from PGP to, to browser and so on. Clients on security. So uh, the, the standard or best practice in case of clients on security is definitely to use, wait, is definitely to use, uh, it is, okay, to use uh, VPN plus store. Uh, there are many, plenty different VPNs you can, you can buy for Bitcoin in a completely anonymous way. So I strongly recommend you to do something like that and use a VPN together with a Tor. Uh, all good crypto markets, they do not use JavaScript. Uh, so uh, I strongly recommend you to use crypto markets uh, which do not use JavaScript. And also strongly recommend you to switch, switch off to disable your JavaScript in your browser. Historically, there were zero-day exploits against Windows version of Firefox exactly against JavaScript function, functionality. So thanks to this, it was possible to reveal some crypto market users and to compromise uh, their security. Another interesting, uh, another important, important thing is to use TELS. TELS is a special privacy aware Linux distribution and I don't mean to be operating system. Uh, sometimes it is possible to use BitMessage. Uh, BitMessage is a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer, peer -peer communication protocol for secure communication. And uh, for example, Outlaw Market used BitMessage also as a mixing service. Another interesting thing I should definitely mention is a router KeyGet Yellowsec Android application. This works especially very good in Prague and in Bratislava because the company uh, UPC they had the real problems. There were, uh, okay, the, the, they, they were not very clever and they generated the WPA Wi Fi password accor uh, according to SSID. So if you see any UPS Wi Fi network around, to, uh, around to you, you, you definitely should try the application router key again, your Losagandro app, and just to check if it is possible to crack uh, these. Uh, Wi-Fi networks or not. And of course, another good uh, practice is use random MAC addresses. Server-side security. So 
Uh, all server and client should all use full design encryption, ideal with a hidden volume. So for yes? Okay, microphone. microphone. So the question is, what is the best way to hijack uh, IP address? Um, to hide your IP address from the VPN. Connect to. Uh, so what's the best way to hide your IP from the VPN? Since you would have your uh, main IP showing to the anonymous VPN, would you connect to Tor first and then your VPN? Or uh, what's the best way besides being yeah. in a public Wi-Fi? Yeah, personally, uh, personally, uh, I would prefer VPN and then Tor. Uh, and but definitely, I recommend you to. There are there are many Tor uh, services. Uh, there are many VPN services that accept bitcoins, and there is a comparis uh, comparison how uh, they care about digital privacy, how many information they lock uh, about you. So I strongly recommend you to make a comparison of different VP, VPNs, anonymous VPNs, and to choose the right one uh, that really cares a lot about, about privacy. But definitely, you can be, you can be never sure that uh, information about you is locked at the uh, VPN endpoints, the, uh, and also at the Tor exit nodes, for example. So all these these are things uh, you, you need just to to be aware that this is possible. Okay. Server side security. Okay. Uh, usually, servers in case of crypto markets are virtualized in uh, multiple server housing centers around the world. Uh, which are paid by bitcoins in a completely anonymous way. So even administrator, uh, crypto markets administrator are uh, are logging to to these uh, crypto markets uh, through Tor or uh, through Tor and VPN. Uh, it's it's necessary to mention that if you have a fully virtualized server uh, which uses uh, full design encryption, you are still vulnerable on the ring zero level. So on the on the real machine level, you can you can you can still make a snapshot of your memory and extract uh, extract key keys which are uh, which are used for encryption. So this is potential risk. Another uh, some crypto market is what I already mentioned, like the Alpha Bay. They they use double through security for extra uh, extra uh, stuff, uh, but uh, as I've already mentioned. This is probably not a good security practice because uh, all connections are uh, exposed to evil exit nodes. And also public, uh, public onion and private onion gateways, these public onions are for all people. Uh, uh, there are slower, provides more anonymity. And private ones, they are quite faster for specific users. And one of the advantages is they are faster and they are immune against denial of service attacks. Uh, also, another good practice uh, which was not implemented in case of Silk Road version 1, that any Bitcoins, any Moneros should be always stored out of the web server uh, on some completely different uh, server, ideally if the crypto market administrator they used call wallets. Okay. Uh, maybe not many people are aware that there are some approaches to implement fully decentralized crypto markets. So I found these three uh, uh, ambitious projects, Axis Mundi, Bid Markets, and Shadow Markets, and now it's called like Umbra, Umbra Project. Uh, unfortunately, this project is still under development uh, with, no, with almost no or small community. So, so productionally, uh, I'm not aware that these systems uh, are used. Uh, now, interesting discussion, Tor versus I2P. So theoretically, like I2P protocol is more secure than Tor. Uh, but the problem of I2P security is that uh, compared to Tor, it has only few nodes. And, uh, and, there, um, and there is a correlation between number of nodes and uh, real anonymity. So if you, it, it doesn't matter how, secu how, how secure and anonymous I2P and could I2P protocol you have, 
if you can provide or if you can have only few nodes. So, what is happening? Someone hacked me. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> also, there are some I2P implementation issues. I'm not sure if you have ever, ever tried I2P protocol, but also usability of I2P clean sucks. And, and uh, I2P address are longer than Tor, uh, Tor addresses, for example. So, uh, but one interesting thing is, and many crypto anarchists uh, rely on this as a, some kind of security uh, by obscurity, or they believe that um, uh, secret government agencies like FBI, DA, and C CI, uh, they, they did and they do much less research about I2P. So from this point of view, if they have any potential zero-day exploit, they probably, they probably try to target uh, Tor networks or Tor protocol instead of I2P. Uh, but of course, this, this is only a question of time. If, if many people start to use uh, I2P, it's quite likely that also secret agencies will be more focused on I2P security. Okay, so crypto market best practices, uh, definitely uh, they should use multi-sig, uh, they should use uh, second factor authentication, PGP, in some crypto markets, for example, Alphabay, two-factor authentication is always enforced. Also, some crypto markets uh, decided not to allow something like FE, which is finalized early, Unless you get explicit permission later, which is a uh, pretty secure practice for, uh, for a uh, crypto market user. And of course, uh, in case of crypto market and crypto anarchy, Bitcoin is unfortunately a bit obsolete. You should move uh, and you should start to use Monero or some, al some more anonymous uh, alternatives. Another cool feature, uh, which, is not a, uh, which is not a security feature, but it's very, maybe a quite practical feature, are currency accounts, which means that these accounts are hedged, what basically means that you, you are able to store your deposit uh, bitcoins in the given currency, for example, euros or, or dollars or something like that, so you can be pretty immune against volatility of bitcoins. If you if you trust more in fiat currency, probably you can try uh, this feature, but it, it will cost you 5%. Dead drops. Personally, I consider this feature to be one of the most unique, uh, most unique and more of the most perspective in the future. So dead drops basically means that you, as a buyer, you don't need to provide any sensitive information. It means you don't need to provide your delivery address. Because if you, like, uh, till now, uh, if you want to receive anything from crypto market, you always uh, had to provide your fake or your real uh, uh, postal address. But, uh, but you're using dead drops, it's not necessary anymore. So uh, there is a special feature of crypto markets, for example, uh, I think it's Outlaw or, or Alphabay, Outlaw, Outlaw Crypto Market, they, they support something like drop bands, which means there, is a special, uh, there are special delivery boys, drop bands, and special, special people, people who are responsible for uh, buying stuff from some wholesalers and then to resell uh, and distribute this stuff physically to some specific places. So, um, so when you when you order anything from crypto markets and you and you decided to use Dropman a function, uh, this guy he just when you pay for that he, he just provide, uh, he just provides you GPS coordinate with a short video clip. Usually it's a panoramatic view of the given given place. So you know exactly where to go how the given place looks like exactly and how uh, and you can you can pick up your, your stuff so the uh, the cool feature is that as a buyer you don't need to provide any personal personal data anyway this still may be a bit dangerous for example uh, if some government agents decides to be a drop man uh, 
it's quite likely that uh, like this guy will be able to catch all, all his customers. But uh, one of the argumentation is that uh, government police should not, uh, should not make a bigger crime in order to, uh, to, to catch some criminals um, who are committing lower crime. But I'm, I'm, I'm sure that this probably works in some developed country, but definitely not in Czech Republic or Slovakia, because Slovak or Czech uh, secret agent, agents are basically gods, I think. They, they can do anything they want, they can buy drugs, they can sell drugs. Uh, so be aware of this fact. And the, another cool feature uh, is that definitely way that in the following years, it will be possible to make dead drop using drones, which is absolutely cool. So imagine that the drones will be responsible for taking some stuff and delivering this stuff uh, everywhere. Uh, even it is possible to, to create and to implement some special protocol uh, that these drones will be able to exchange information uh, and until uh, until the, the final destination, it, it will not be clear what are the right GPS coordinates. So, for example, if you, if you are police and you catch these drones, you, you will not be able to extract the final destination or expected destination of this drone. So, uh, imagine that maybe something, uh, this is just a vision, something like onion routing or garden routing will be possible to implement in the real physical world. Okay, so this is a very short deep dot web crypto market comparison. You can see the, uh, the most famous crypto markets. You can see which of these crypto markets use second factor authentication, uh, which first uh, vendor PGP, uh, which use, for example, final, final as early feature and so on. Okay, so summary, we can see that especially thanks to the, the government and uh, their secret agencies and their rates, uh, security of crypto markets has been significantly improved. It's much, much better uh, than security of the first version of Silk Road. Uh, the crypto markets like Alphabet, the Dream Market, Autel Market, Valhalla, and all other markets are being online, they're keeping running many years without any shutdown by government agencies. So what does it mean? It means that the war on drugs cannot be won. Uh, so, and also it means that crypto anarchists uh, uh, are definitely one step ahead to the government. So, and so the government, uh, it's still slow. But despite of this fact, uh, governments uh, spend millions of taxpayers' money to fight this, this meaningless war on drugs. And they try to hunt the drug uh, uh, dealers and drug consumers, and it doesn't make sense at all. So that's all. Thank you a lot. Thank you very much, Paolo. Uh, let me ask you the first question. Uh, it's obvious from your presentation that it's very important uh, to choose the right currency for the payments on the, on the crypto markets. And you mentioned Bitcoin and Monero. You, you mentioned uh, what are the weaknesses of, of Bitcoins. But uh, very often it's talked about Dash as one of the very anonymous currencies that, uh, that are very good for, for this way of, of trades. But recently, uh, I think it was last week, uh, Dash stated that they are going to implement um, anti-money laundering uh, uh, compliance in, in cooperation with Coin Prism. So I would like to ask you what is your uh, view if uh, we can still trust Dash in, 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 the, in terms of uh, anonymous, uh, anonymity or if it's not a good idea anymore due to this uh, due to this implementation? Good question. Uh, to be sincere, uh, I'm quite confused by this des uh, Dash decision. Why they, uh, because they 
over many years, their building reputation of, of true uh, anonymous uh, cryptocurrency, but now they decided to do something like, like this. They tried to cooperate with the governments, and they tried to, uh, they want to implement uh, uh, know your customers and anti-money laundering uh, uh, rules into, into their uh, project. Uh, I'm a bit confused, but some people think uh, that uh, it may be caused that the original plan, original goal of the, of the Dash is to be an official government approved cryptocurrency. Because in, in, uh, in case of Dash, you cannot, you cannot see inside of the transaction, so you are not able to, to find out uh, for which you, you pay, for example. Uh, but you can, uh, you, can, you, you, you can do some aggregations, you can, you can reveal the whole amount of money you, uh, you used in Dash, for example, and usually this is sufficient uh, for uh, tax purposes. Yeah, so, I don't know, I, I'm really confused, and I think this is definitely a threat uh, for Dash, and personally, my candidate is Monero, not the Dash just because of this. Um, well, thank you for, uh, for this positive presentation. I like to see all the innovations. Uh, where I see no innovation, um, you mentioned the dead drops, but they are not used a lot. They're as far used. as I know. They're used, they're used. Yeah. Is, it, is, it, is it really common? Because as far as I know, um, from my own knowledge, and the people I know, uh, the still the most common way is to use, and this is paradoxical, the government post offices. Mm -hmm. So we still use the governmental post to, to distribute the stuff, uh, which is a weak point, I would say, in the, in, in the whole system. And I don't know if we, if we see any uh, use of private companies, private posts, or, or some uh, companies like Uber that you will send send the good with, with, these, with these services, so, so do I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not aware of this. I think it can be a quite big threat for private companies to provide um, like anonymous uh, mailboxes. But what I, what I can tell you is that like, like these dead drops is, a not, uh, is another idea. This is fully functional implemented things. You can try it. At least in Germany it works. Uh, and there are many people involved in this, so this fully functional thing. Okay, actually, this dead drops is most widely used in Russia and Ukraine, by the way. Uh, however, okay. Uh, okay. I have a different question. Uh, okay, most, okay. Uh, Which market do you mean? Uh, I mean just uh, okay. common okay. Russian okay. guys and no, no, Ukrainian no, no, no. who okay. are just, just... Just to be clear, there are two crypto markets uh, who implemented dead drops. Uh, that implemented dead drops. The first one is Tochka crypto market. You probably you probably mean Tochka crypto market, which is quite popular in Ukraine and Russian. And the the, the second one I think is Outlaw crypto market uh, that uh, tries to tar target uh, German users. Okay, mm. ask. Okay, uh, actually my question is for me most vulnerable point of this uh, all ecosystem is uh, exchanging uh, crypto money to fiat and back. And uh, you just didn't cover this topic. What what's what's a better way of exchanging uh, fiat to cryptocurrency and back? And what is the most secure of this operation? Okay, so I think this comes of something for completely another discussion. But what I, what I, what I can tell you that at this time there are few ways how you can transfer your bitcoins in a completely anonymous way to cash. One of the one of, one of these possibilities using, for example, our uh, Bitcoin ATM machine. Uh, maybe there is a okay, okay, but okay. What I can tell you, there are some. I'm sure. I'm more than sure there there are some other potential ways how you can transfer Bitcoin to cash, which are more anonymous, and and so there is a quite big demand for such services. So yes, there are some of there. It's possible. So for example, there are, there are few anonymous prepaid car cards around the world. Uh, okay, uh, bit plastic, for example. Bit plastic. Bit plastic, uh, okay, there are some limits 
uh, in these cards. Okay, uh, so uh, there are, even in Czech Republic or Poland, there are anonymous prepaid cards. Uh, so it's, defini it's definitely possible to, to transfer like bitcoins or non arrow to something like, like yeah. this. I would and also, also, you can still use local bitcoins, you know, local bitcoins. So you can use, uh, and also you can still use Bitscore, you know Bitscore? Bitscore is a fully decentralized uh, Bitcoin exchange. So even, even if you have really draconical uh, legislation that the government will shut down all, crypto, uh, all Bitcoin exchanges or exchanges, we can still use Bitscore, which is a fully decentralized uh, Bitcoin exchange. So now it's not possible to shut down all, all of this. I uh, thanks. I yeah. would only add that if you exit Parallelpolis, turn left and go 100 meters, there is a new stand where you can buy fully anonymous prepaid card, which is called Blesk Peniženka Blesk Wallet. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, there is one ex example of it. Uh, next question, please. Next question. Um, you mentioned three decentralized uh, crypto markets that are in development, uh, but there is one in production, namely Open Bazaar. Uh, what are your thoughts on Open Bazaar? Okay, so firstly, uh, I would like to say that Open Bazaar uh, doesn't implement anonymity yet, which means that the uh, the, the, the primary, uh, primary goal of Open Buzzer is to attract as much as possible users. But uh, because of many reasons, the anonymity is not yet implemented in case of Open Buzzer. Uh, like the problem is that Open Buzzer um, uses IPFS, and the other problem uh, is that it uses UDP in addition to TCP protocol, and, uh, and anonymization of IPFS. And UDP is a problematic because in case of UDP, you cannot use Tor, but you need, you need to use I2P. So it's quite likely that uh, if there, there is some, uh, if, if the anonymity of Open Bazaar is solved in the future, it's quite likely it, it'll be using I2P. So what I can tell you is that Open Bazaar is definitely not a good choice if you want to use really anonymous crypto market. But maybe it's a question of time, and I believe it's only a question of, of, of time that maybe in few, few months, few years, you can expect uh, open bazaar with really good I2P implementation uh, for crypto market use. Some other questions? Hello. Uh, I just want to ask, you know, if you are saying that uh, Bitcoin is not uh, good to use for dark markets and stuff like that because of blockchain analysis attack, if you got any of the newer wallets which actually uh, change the address you're receiving bitcoins every time you receive it, are you still accessible to the attack of this blockchain analysis yeah. when your wallet's different? No, this doesn't, help, this doesn't help a lot. Of course, if in, in case of bitcoins, you can generate unique uh, public address for each transaction, but uh, uh, this doesn't help you. You know, the, your transactions are uh, still public and visible in, uh, in a Bitcoin blockchain, so this doesn't help you. Uh, at all. So I st strongly recommend you, uh, like the Bitcoin was not uh, created or invented to be really anonymous. So definitely Monero or some other alternative. I understand the transactions are there in the public, but how can actually someone physically trace you when your address is always different doing yeah. the blockchain al analysis attack? I don't see the way how, how someone could. Yeah, th it means, for example, when you, when you make a transaction, for example, you receive some Bitcoin, someone revealed your, uh, your physical address or uh, something you order, and you use the same Bitcoins for ordering something different, and you, you, don't, you, 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 don't use, uh, you don't use Bitcoin laundry, I think it's, it's still possible to make uh, some correlation. Uh, when, after, after this presentation, we can meet and I, I tell you more details about this. Thank you. A last, a last brief question. Okay. Um. I have a question regarding Zcash, what you mean, uh, or what do you think about the Zcash that will come out in o October 28? Yeah, uh, from, um, I think, I think, I, I, I think uh, that cash can be, uh, can be potential candidate for uh, alternative, 
a competitor of Monero. Uh, personally, to be, to be sincere, I have no practical experiences with this cryptocurrency, but what I, th what I think that I can say that any competition is good, so it's definitely necessary to have many different anonymous cryptocurrencies, and all these cryptocurrencies, they should definitely compete each other and uh, improve their, their features, anonymity and security features. So I don't have practical experiences, but I'm, if, even now I'm a big fan of this crypt cryptocurrency. So thank you very much, Paolo. Thank you for your questions. And we